Hello and welcome back to another episode of Steve's Reviews. Today's episode is brought to you in collaboration with Fintech Finance. Fintech Finance is one of the leading news platforms for financial technology. They work with prominent executives in the industry to provide consistent and accurate intelligence on emerging trends, breakthrough technologies and stimulating developments. You can check them out by going to www.fintech.finance or following them on Twitter at FintechF. Now, they've asked me to revisit my Monzo review and take a look at the changes since I last did it. Now, some of you may not remember this review because I actually did it, well, about a year and a half or so ago. So I did it quite some time and a few of you may have stuck around since then, but I guarantee quite a lot of you are very new. Now, a lot of you have seen my review recently on Curve. Monzo is something very similar. Now, just to recap what Monzo is. It's touted as a bank that lives on your smartphone and built for the modern gadget and tech lover. Built for the people who want to put old stuffy banks in the bin and revamp the way they bank. It gives people an in-depth look at where and how they spend and makes managing your money how it should be. Quick, simple and easy. Back when I reviewed it, Monzo was one of the best ways to manage your money. Now we're in 2019, Fintech Finance have asked me to see how Monzo has changed over that time. Now, this won't be a full review of Monzo because I've already done that and I will leave a link right there for you so you can have a look at that if you want to. This will just be the updates since that particular review. So, before we dive into the app and have a look at the changes in a little bit more detail though, there has been a massive change under the HUD for Monzo. Now, when I originally reviewed it, as a way to manage your money in terms of the best money management gadget, Monzo was not a bank. At the time, it was a prepaid top-up card that you simply top up via Apple Pay or bank transfer, and then you use that money then to spend on things, and then it records how you're spending. It allows you to actually track everything in more detail than modern banks, or old banks, rather. Well, now, instead of just being a prepaid top-up card, Monzo is a fully fledged bank. And with that comes a bunch of different things. You've got joint accounts, you've got flexible savings accounts, although for those you need a thousand pounds to start, which seems a bit steep. You've got overdrafts, which again is up to a thousand pounds, but I think the fees on those overdrafts are quite expensive. I've got a list here. It says it's no fees on the first £20, and then 50p a day after. That's quite expensive because it means that if you were overdrawn by £20 and one pence, it would only take five years to max out your overdraft with that daily fee, which I think is relatively expensive. And lastly, you've got the addition of adding your salary directly into Monzo rather than having to top up. Oh, and I think direct debits, that wasn't available either. So overall, you've got quite a few new under the hood base core features with the fact that Monzo is now a bank and not just a money management gadget. But the question is, now that they're a bank, are they still one of the best money management gadgets available? So let's finally dive into the app. Okay, so like I said, not a lot has changed in the app. The app has actually stayed very similar in design since my original review a year and a half ago. So you've got all the kind of summary tabs and you've got all the home tabs, which again, I'm not going to go into, but if you want further detail of those, again, check out my review of Monzo, which I've left in a link earlier and in a link in the description. But let's look at the changes. Now in account section, this is where a big change has happened. In the account section, this allows you to essentially set up a joint account and also set up as many savings pots as you want. Now, I spoke earlier about a flexible savings pot. That's something a little bit different, but this here is just your own personal little space where you can stash money away for a rainy day. Now, if I look at this now, we've got my main account and I can swipe here and I've got my fuel savings for my van, which you can see is zero. So it means I'm not going anywhere this month, but I can add another pot. So if I create a pot here, I can either do a flexible savings pot, which we discussed, or a regular pot. So let's pop in there and it allows me to choose a photo. 
Now that I've chosen whiskey as the main photo and whiskey fund as the name, I've got a few options and ways to save money. Now, first of all, I can choose to round up transactions. If I choose to do that, essentially, if I spend 80p on a Mars bar or maybe after Brexit, £8.50, it will round it up to the nearest pound and put that extra money in this savings pot, which isn't an unusual thing. Many banks do that already. But what's really cool is I can actually choose to lock those savings to unlock at a certain date. Now, if we lock this, let's say, until 30th of March 2022, I can lock it, saving something, and we're hit done. So that now locks this particular pot until then. You can see a little lock icon. Now, if I add some money in here, let's just say add £10, that £10 is locked. But don't worry that doesn't matter it's not locked properly because i can hit withdraw and it gives me a bit of a warning and says are you sure you want to unlock this pot and you can say yes unlock and close this pot all it does is make it a little bit more difficult for you to withdraw it or not even more difficult it just gives you a warning so if you are going to withdraw your savings like i said like i do all the time that is a good way to make sure that you don't, or at least give you a little prompter to tell you not to. So that's quite a cool addition. So that's one of the things they've added since I did my initial review. Now, another thing they've added is nearby payments, which allows you to pay anyone in the near vicinity. Now, let me show you how this works. You tap on payments at the bottom, and you tap on the kind of weird sort of Wi-Fi logo at the top. And this shows you anyone nearby that you can pay which I think is a really cool little feature. And I used it very recently because a friend of mine, Dan, was going to Ikea and I asked him to pick me up some of those smart plugs because I wasn't going and it's quite a long way away for me. So I tapped on this, I tapped Dan, pay, and I was done because he was standing right there and it popped up in the app. So I think that is such a cool little feature and it just makes things dead easy to pay people who are nearby that you potentially owe money to. Dan didn't manage to get any of those smart plugs, as you can tell by that last review. It took me about two months to get those. Anyway, one last thing that they've added, which I think has been a huge benefit to me anyway, is let's say now you're out and about, maybe on a road trip, for example, with four friends, and you've gone to Esso and you spent £11.76 in petrol, which seems like a very low amount because petrol is bloody expensive. But let's say you want to split the bill between all four of you. Now, Yes, fine, you could get all four of you to work it out how much that bill would cost uh, and then ask them to use nearby friends to pay. Or you can use the bill splitting feature, which simply allows you to go into it, tap which friends you want to split, split the bill with, tap next, and then request money. And it's as simple as that. It splits it all equally, or you can choose proportionately. And I think that is fantastic. It's one of the coolest things I've seen. So in terms of Monzo being a money management gadget, still, it does a very, very good job at bringing management of your money into the future. But with all this said about money management, it's being one of the best money management gadgets. The question is, do I still think it's the best money management gadget out there? Now, a lot of you have seen my review of Curve, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, I believe that Curve is one of my favourite money management gadgets still. However, Monzo is a bank, so you need somewhere to store your money. Is Monzo a good place to store your money in today's technology-oriented world? Well, there are some elements of Monzo that are fantastic, that I've just shown you. It makes it second to none. However, there are a couple of things that really should be updated soon, because it's a bit outdated. One of those things is checks. Now, if I wanted to cash in a check with Monzo, I would have to put it in an envelope, address it to Monzo, send it off, which would take however many days, and then it takes about five working days for that check to go into my account. Now, that seems like a really outdated and old way of doing things. Yes, checks are outdated and old, but you will always find that someone, somewhere, maybe a relative who doesn't even know what, the internet is will send you a check for your birthday that is a given and if they do that then with monzo it's a nightmare let's look at another bank for example lloyd's lloyd's allow you to scan it in the app the check and it cashes it directly into your phone no need to go to a bank no need to post the check they can do it right from the phone 
So why have Monzo not got that? Because Monzo is supposed to be really tech oriented. And again, talking about the fees for the overdrafts, they seem quite expensive too. I mean, 50p a day is quite a lot. I mean, let's look at another bank, for example, like TSB. I think they charge a monthly fee of six pounds or something. It's not a lot. Well, six pound is what? What's that over the course of a month? Finally worked that out. Don't know why I couldn't work that out. With TSB, it's about 20p a day. So it's much less, much, much less. Mm, comparatively, it's not that good. But I guess that's not really you know, related to the tech, but that is still a factor in choosing whether or not you'd go for uh, Monzo. Now, the real question, and probably something that you've all been asking inside your heads is, am I still using Monzo since my previous review? Well, I'm not going to lie. I have stopped using Monzo, but that doesn't mean that I don't love it. The reason I've stopped using it is very, very simple, and it's the fact they don't yet offer business accounts. They only offer personal and joint accounts, which is absolutely fine, and it's absolutely brilliant to manage your money in such a way. However, I want complete control of all my money in a gadget and tech way across all of my bank accounts. I want my personal, joint, and business to be brought into the future. So I've had to come up with another solution, which I will talk about in a future episode at some point. But Monzo for me isn't that relevant anymore because I need my business account associated with tech and gadgets and just allow me to control my money a little bit better. So who ultimately is this for? Well, if you are an individual or maybe even a couple looking to revolutionize the way that you manage your money and bring that into the future, make your banking really techy and gadgety, then Monzo is for you. Honestly, it is one of the best money management things that you can get and use. And the fact it's now a bank just makes things so much easier. But like I said, if you potentially are a sole trader like myself, or have a business, then Monzo might not be for you. But definitely from the personal level, it is incredible. Now, my advice is try it for yourself because it really will change the way you use money and it will change your ideas and views on money in terms of a technology sense. Seriously, it will. And if you do want to try it, use the link in the description below because that will get you five pounds for completely free just for opening an account with Monzo. So listen, have a beer on me, try it out and let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And that concludes today's review in collaboration with FinTech Finance and I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon. Before you go, consider supporting me on my Patreon page by clicking here. It'll give you some great discounts on stuff I've reviewed and helps me to continue doing reviews. If you want to see some fun stuff, click here to see the highlights of Stu's reviews. And as a friendly reminder, click this button to subscribe.